coming up. It's a classic song with multiple storylines of danger, deceit, and despair. So cryptic, even now, decades later, fans are still trying to figure out exactly what it means. We'll try to solve it. But it doesn't help that the band played a prank on fans in the way they listed the song on the back of the album. And it also confused everybody when this rookie band appeared on national television with a completely different vocalist singing the song. And he didn't sound anything like the record. Apparently, the official lead singer had stage fright so badly he couldn't perform it. On this hit, though, they showed their genius in the studio with the use of an electric sitar, combined with a really trashed out, cheap plastic organ. We're gonna break down a classic of the 70s with a band named after something uh, naughty and mindless, yet their music, it's so intelligent, your IQ goes up 20 points every time you listen to them, I swear. It's coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if uh, you've ever had your tape eaten by your stereo and you had to use a pencil or a pen to nurse it back to health, you know what I'm talking about, you're gonna dig this channel. Subscribe below right now so you never miss an episode of our daily features. Click the bell and also check out our Patreon link. It's our insider community for the real fans. Walter Becker and Donald Fagan met while attending Bard College in New York in 1967. They became fast friends, cemented by their mutual love of jazz. Fagan and Becker began gigging on the local band scene with several groups, including an outfit named Leather Canary uh, that featured future star actor comedian Chevy Chase on drums, actually. Uh, the buddies moved to Brooklyn in 1969 to get the attention of the record community starting with peddling their wares at the Brill Building. They were hired to compose music for the soundtrack of a very low budget film. It was called, You've Gotta Walk It Like You Talk It or You'll Lose That Beat, that uh, starred Richard Pryor. Jay and the Americans hired Becker to play guitar and Fagan to play keyboards in their own touring band in the 70s. During their stint with Jay and the Americans, uh, where they played and toured for Peanuts, really. The duo saw an advertisement in the personal section of the Village Voice that read, looking for keyboardist and bassist, must have jazz chops, a-holds need not apply. The ad was placed by Denny Dias, who was a struggling musician working out of his home basement in Hicksville, New York, which was also uh, Billy Joel's hometown, coincidentally. Uh, Donald and Walter responded to the advertisement, hooked up with Dias, and immediately they began to play their own material. The tipping point though, for Be Becker and Fagan, and Dias for that matter, was connecting with ABC Records staff producer Gary Katz. Katz was intrigued by what he heard, particularly from Becker and Fagan, and initially offered them a job to be staff writers for the label. The material that Becker and Fagan composed was too complicated for the artists signed to ABC Records at the time, so uh, Katz encouraged uh, the duo to move to Los Angeles and recruit musicians for a whole new band, a vehicle for their music. The trek to the west, to the west coast, led to the formation of Steely Dan, named after an erotic device from William S. Burroughs' 1959 novel, Naked Lunch. It was an inauspicious start for Steely Dan as the group's first single, a country-tinged pop ditty titled Dallas, Bye. With drummer Jim Hodder providing lead vocals. In fact, uh, it was sold so poorly, the label didn't even keep an official count of it. Now, despite the disappointing returns or the results for the first offering, Gary Katz and ABC still believed in Steely Dan, so they stuck with the group to make their debut album. Becker and Fagan began writing for their first record, hiring coveted musicians, session musicians and surrounding themselves with a core unit of outstanding players that included the likes of Jeff Skunk Baxter on guitars and other contributions, Danny Dias on guitar and electric sitar, Jim Hodder on drums, and vocalist David Palmer, who uh, was enlisted primarily because Donald Fagan uh, was actually petrified to sing in front of a live audience. Before the recording sessions for the album, Steely Dan rehearsed for several months in an unfinished office wing attempting to you know, get in the pocket, as rhythm and blues musicians used to say. Uh, Becker and Fagan decided to name their debut LP, Can't Buy a Thrill. 
a phrase directly lifted from the Bob Dylan song, It Takes a Lot to Laugh, a Train to Cry. Can't buy a thrill. The lead single from Can't Buy a Thrill was an absorbing track with loose, warlike Latin rock rhythms, uh, sophisticated solos, and cryptic lyrics. It was called Do It Again. As we go into the story behind this classic song, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses I use to see everything. One of the best features of Zenny Optical is that you never have to worry again about foggy lenses or glare. They have Zenny's advanced two-in-one anti-fog and anti-reflective coating, if you have that. I actually have it in all, all my frames. You can go check that out at zenny.com. So Do It Again opens with the sultry conga padding of percussionist Victor Feldman. Now, Steely Dan already had an excellent conga player uh, in their band with Skunk Baxter, but as leaders of the group, Becker and Fagan had the autonomy to bring in whomever they wanted to play on their studio recordings. So they did. Walter and Donald were just enamored with Feldman because he actually worked with one of their heroes, Miles Davis, on his Seven Steps to Heaven album. Uh, Feldman's trance-like groove is joined by Fagan's mysterious, yet jazzy keyboard stylings, followed by Becker's bass undertones. And then Baxter's lead guitar flourishes, you know, are added to effectively introduce Donald Fagan's spellbinding storytelling. In the morning, you go gunning for the man who stole your water, and you fire till he is done in but they catch you at the border. And, you till he is done in, but they catch and the mourners are all singing as they drag you by your feet. But the hangman isn't hanging, and they put you on the street. The lyrics for Do It Again are just, they're highbrow, complex, and incohesive, really, which became a trademark of Steely Dan's unique brand of rock theory. But the Becker and Fagan were notorious, practical jokers. Uh, they pulled a big prank on their fans when they credited Do It Again, a song that they co-authored as Trad, T-R-A-D, on the album sleeve for Can't Buy a Thrill, meaning it was a traditional song with an unknown provenance. Uh, that intentional discrediting is an early example of the arcane nature of Steely Dan's compositions. Do It Again is an intertwining of really three storylines. A modern day Western with a showdown at the border in verse one. Dawning, but they catch you at the a bitter tell of deceit in a room with the narrator's two timer, that's in verse two. In room, two timer, and, and the desperation of a gambling addict who finds himself back in Vegas with a handle in his hand. That's in verse three. There is an underlining theme of self-destruction and a life of uh, perpetual crime in each of the song's episodes, where ultimately karma is the victor. Given Donald Fagan's deep interest in Buddhist theology, the will turning round and round could be a reference to the Buddhist will of life, birth, rebirth, and existence. Now the chorus of Do It Again expresses the, the Buddhist rebirth philosophy really perfectly. You go back, Jack, do it again. Yeah, you go back, Jack, do it again. Fagan's vocal stylings give Do It Again just an unfolding of suspense and intrigue. I don't believe anyone does it quite like Donald Fagan. He's got such a unique voice. Although Fagan was the lead singer of Steely Dan, like I said, he was scared to death to be the band's front man, and that's where David Palmer came in. Palmer was recruited specifically to sing lead vocals and take center stage for Steely Dan's uh, live performances. One of the most high profile performances by David Palmer as the front man for Steely Dan was when they appeared on the popular TV series, The Midnight Special, that was in 73, where they performed Do It Again. Do it again. The performance, you know, was solid in that uh, Palmer sang well, but anybody watching and listening to the broadcast had to be perplexed as to why his vocal on Do It Again sounded nothing like the, the haunting distinction 
of the great Donald Fagan's voice that was heard on the recorded version. David Palmer delivered an incredibly inspiredly vocal, though, on Dirty Work, one of the great, great standout tracks on Camp by a Thrill, one of the best tracks uh, for Steely Dan overall. I love that song. It's one of those songs that, that definitely hits home for a lot of people who've been through a similar experience. I'm a fool to do your dirty work, oh yeah. David Palmer also sang lead on Brooklyn O's The Charmer Under Me, another great cut from Can't Buy a Thrill, and he doubled with Fagan on the chorus of their stellar second single from the record, Reeling In The Years, one of the all-time rock classics that we'll definitely cover down the road. Are you reeling in the years? Palmer was only with Steely Dan for Can't Buy a Thrill, and he provided background vocals on several tunes for the, the follow-up LP, Countdown to Ecstasy, before he was uh, dismissed in late 73. Donald Fagan reluctantly agreed to take over the frontman position for the future, but he has been deferential, uh, even insisting that Michael McDonald, who did a ton of session work with Steely Dan in the 70s, should be the group's lead singer. That would have been uh, possible, actually, be this was before McDonald became the frontman for the Doobie Brothers when Tom Johnston departed. Uh, you might recall McDonald, uh, or as I call him, D, you know, his soothing and masterful background vocals on Steely Dan's classic, Peg, one of my favorites, probably my favorite song ever by them. After doing his time with Steely Dan, David Palmer collaborated with the other artists, highlighted by his penning of the lyrics for Carole King's smash hit, uh, Jazz Man. That went to number two on the Billboard Hot 100 in uh, 1974. So Do It Again features some of the most inventive and captivating musicianship that Steely Dan has ever recorded, and that's saying something. Uh, the long instrumental progression in the song's bridge, for example, just phenomenal. Let's first pay tribute, though, to Denny Dias' amazing electric sitar solo in the bridge of Do It Again. On paper, a sitar for Do It Again wouldn't fit the Santana seasoned Latin rock arrangement, since the sitar is a mystical instrument from the Middle East, but it totally worked. Uh, the psychedelic flavor of the sitar somehow enhanced the uh, the wild, sinister adventure that's in Do It Again. I would have liked to have seen the look, <laughs> actually, on, on Danny Dias' face when Becker and Fagan told him that they wanted him to play a guitar solo for, for the bridge. Although Dias, you know, was an accomplished guitarist, he had never played an electric sitar before Becker and Fagan asked him to. That makes the final result even more impressive, though. It was as if uh, Denny Dias was born to play that exotic instrument. Dias's inspired mastering of the sitar had a just a raw experimental quality to it, but it was played with conviction and with purpose. It proved to be a powerful hallmark that made Do It Again a very compelling piece of rock music noir. Uh, the sitar was also famously used for a spiritual accent by the Beatles on Norwegian Wood. <laughs> Rolling Stones on Paint It Black. No colors anymore, I want them to turn black. Of course, there was Traffic, was Paper Sun. Three of the greatest tracks of that era. Next, let's hail uh, Donald Fagan's keyboard solo in the second part of the bridge, played on a plastic combo organ. <laughs> combo organs were designed to provide a portable alternative to the heavy console organs back then. They were typically encased in plastic cases and supported on lightweight aluminum. Unlike the popular Hammond organ, though, combo organs were entirely electronic and nearly all the models were solid state. Fagan used the cheap Yamaha YC30 combo organ to create a, a dark, ominous vibe. That particular organ model is uh, capable of producing a variety of sounds, including what's referred to as a partimento effect. That can be simulated by sliding your fingers across a pad, apparently. Uh, Donald Fagan definitely created that effect at about three minutes and 37 seconds in the song following Dias' sitar solo. The 
classic combo organ is the type of instrument that would uh, taunt its way to greater acclaim later in the 70s, utilized most famously or notably by Elvis Costello and the Attractions, among others. Despite its genius placement on Do It Again, Steely Dan never used the combo organ on one of the recordings again. Steely Dan's Do It Again, just one of the all-time greatest hits of the classic rock world. The single made a big splash for Steely Dan when it climbed all the way to number six on the Billboard Hot 100 and in Canada in 73, and it set the stage for Becker and Fagan's Hall of Fame career for sure. We'll turn it round and round you go back. The single also broke the top 10 in the Netherlands and has certainly earned a number one spot in our hearts here at Professor of Rock. There have been many uh, interesting renditions of Do It Again. Uh, versions by Waylon Jennings. Paul Hardcastle had a good one. Tori Amos, uh, Colin Ray, Smash Mouth. And uh, Falco from Rock Me Amadeus fame. Steely Dan co-leader Walter Becker was the quiet architect of the band and the brilliant perfectionist sidekick to Donald Fagan. His intelligence, vision, and superbly meticulous musicianship was prodigiously uh, manifested on Do It Again, as well as virtually every other Steely Dan composition for more than 40 years. Sadly, Walter passed away in 2017 from cancer of the esophagus. Uh, and after Walter's death, Donald Fagan announced to the world that he intended to keep the music that he created with Walter alive for as long as he could or can with the Steely Dan band which I'm, I'm grateful for that. I was a little late to the Steely Dan party. My dad had their records and he'd play them, but I wasn't into it as I was growing up. You know, my ears were attracted to the ear candy of the 80s pop explosion and then metal and, and new wave. However, when I was a senior in high school, I really started to get it. And by my early 20s, I was a Steely Dan disciple. You know, maybe my ears weren't experienced enough to appreciate their musical brilliance earlier. Steely Dan, you know, Donald Fagan and Walter Becker. They're just genius level musicians. They went beyond all rock and roll conventionalism to meticulously craft songs that are extremely complex, almost unrepeatable. They were rock and roll's great ironists, if you will, the kings of musical sarcasm with comical and cryptic lyrics. Their sound was so sophisticated and refined yet completely accessible with uh, melodic hooks, spacious harmonies, and really unique time signatures. I'm convinced listening to Steely Dan makes you smarter. Hey, 19, no, Lyrically, they are in the highest echelons of pop music, and their catalog has only gotten richer over time. So we salute Donald Fagan and Walter Becker, the sarcastic duo of jazz rock, and there will be more to come about this amazing band. But if you have a change of heart. Leave us a comment about Steely Dan. What are your favorite albums and songs by this group? What memories are tied to them? Uh, give us your comments below. If you like our content, we definitely invite you to become a permanent subscriber in this community. Uh, to get Steely Dan's greatest music, click on our links. And don't forget to check us out on Patreon. Be a part of this community. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe out there.